Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. This is Sunday, August 11th. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Jeff, we have another red hatched area. We are looking at Invest 98L, now National Hurricane Center, giving this a 90% chance of forming into a tropical cyclone over the next seven days. And in the last update, it's increased from 40% to 70% in the next 48 hours. We uh, are fairly certain this is going to uh, form a close center. And when it does, we'll have a better idea on forecast track. But overall, this thing is, looks like it's going to be more of a threat for the lesser Antilles, greater Antilles, possibly Bahamas as we move on through the week. As far as strength goes, that's pretty much up in the air. Right now, um, infrared showing a pretty disorganized system. Like you said earlier, much like we saw with Debbie, kind of in that same area. So what what do you think the timing on this particular system is as far as getting organized? And what are your thoughts beyond that point when we actually have a tropical depression? Yeah, I think we'll be there here in a couple of days um, as this moves off to the west and west-northwest. So the Leeward Islands, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico are really the the uh, locations to really keep an eye on this. And and once this finally gets its act together and, and gets up into the Northeast Caribbean here, and there's still the potential this passes to the north and east of that, and the impacts here are relatively mild, but there's a fair amount of uh, potential that this comes across these islands and, and even impacts Puerto Rico. And I think the the potential is for much more favorable conditions as it starts to get into those islands. And so I don't think we're going to see a whole lot, for example, say later today. But as we get into Monday and Tuesday, that's when we could see a tropical depression, tropical storm form, you know, exactly where the center formed. Again, this is another one of these big, big, broad wave axes and envelopes. And so the, the surface center could form up here where we have a little bit more deeper convection. It could form a little bit further south down here. And it just it just depends at this point, but regardless of, of where the surface center forms, there's decent agreement here, at least for the next three to four days on this moving off to the west northwest impacting potentially the leeward islands and Puerto Rico. And then just having the sharp right turn and this is due to a, a trough along the US east coast that's been there really since Debbie. Uh, move through and then it still remains in that area and there you know there's some debate on how exactly how sharp is this turn and and does it do some type of weird turning back to the northwest here in the northern Atlantic and you know uh, just kind of looking at the agreement here it, it, this looks to be uh, well east of the United States east coast um, possibly a threat to Bermuda um, as we get into late next week, things can, of course, change. So it's good to just to keep an eye on this as it as it moves off to the west and eventually makes that right hand turn where exactly it makes that turn. You know, it's a little bit further to the west here that it impacts the Bahamas or is it further to the east um, where we really don't have any threat at all, um, potentially to the Bahamas. So we'll just have to see. But uh, there's there's fair agreement here in this and the ensembles. Uh, of this turning north across the Western Atlantic. And this will probably become a fairly significant hurricane in the Western Atlantic once it kind of pulls north of the Caribbean. Uh, conditions are fairly favorable, uh, high pressure aloft, very warm sea surface temperatures here. So it wouldn't be surprising at all if this were to become a major hurricane here in the Western Atlantic. And, and the, if, if this were to pan out here, uh, the biggest impacts on the East Coast are gonna be big swells. Uh, as we get into late next week and, and next weekend. So yeah. we'll see something to, to pay attention to out there over the the next, uh, you know, several days. And we'll, we'll be dealing with this system for probably a week or so uh, as it makes that long track through there to the Western Atlantic. Yeah, well, let's hope that hold that track holds true and stays off of the mainland coast of the United States at least. And um, the, the, uh, Colorado State University and NOAA have come out with their final numbers and not much difference what they forecasted in terms of overall numbers, hurricanes and major storms for this year. Um, but we are on uh, August 11th and, you know, some long range models I've looked at call for some dry air to be moving into the Atlantic in a couple of weeks and we're still not into full La Nina. There's some other factors out there. Uh, of course, we still have warm sea surface temperatures, but what are your thoughts on the rest of the Atlantic hurricane season, Jeff? 
Well, let's see. We've had four named storms. Uh, two of them have been hurricanes, and uh, we'll probably get – we will very likely get our, our next named storm and, and likely a hurricane uh, this week. And so, you know, we, we saw some of this back in, in 2005, and if you look back at 1933 and, and those some of these really busy years, uh, we kind of saw a very uh, – a, 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 a lot of activity early in the season in that June and mid-July time frame. And then we kind of had a break in that mid-July through mid-August. And, and we've seen something very similar here this year. Um, and I think the, the factors are certainly still there for a, for a very busy season. Um, it's not so much as we talk about the number of storms and the names, but it's, it's where they hit. And if, if you look at so far what we've had this season, it's been a very Western basin focused season. So of the four storms we've had so far, all of them have been in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Ernesto, as it develops this week, will probably not threaten the Gulf, but the Western Atlantic. And so there's kind of this theme here, kind of like what we saw in 2005, where the Gulf is fairly active, the Caribbean is fairly active, the Western Atlantic is pretty active, and it's that in close development. So these waves really can't get going out there in the Atlantic. There's the dry air, there's some dust. A lot of that's going to be going away here. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, but these waves kind of move further to the west before they find conditions really favorable for development. Um, and of course, that as we have seen, that places the U.S. mainland at a higher risk of landfalls and impacts from these storms. And so I think I think that's still kind of the big takeaway from this season is, yeah, I mean, we're going to crank out some storms if we're going to if we're going to get up to 17 to to 23, 24 named storms this year. We're at four. We're gonna we're gonna crank out a lot of storms here in 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 uh in August and September, maybe even October. One one thing I will say that's kind of different from say like 2020 is we have not really seen a lot of subtropical storms this year. So these are the storms that tend to form up in the northern Atlantic, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the central Atlantic. And we also have not seen a lot of storms that last 12, 24 hours. We saw kind of a lot of that back in 2020, where we had these very weak, sheared, uh, short-term storm, tropical storms, 40, 45 miles an hour that were 12, 24 hours long. And we haven't seen that. What we have seen really this year has been deep tropical uh, system, you know, coming out of the tropics, uh, hurricanes and stuff like that. And so there, there's certainly some differences um, from the previous years, but I, I think the all the signals are there for a really, really busy August and September and probably lingering on into October. La Nina years tend to be, uh, you know, carry on into October, especially in the Caribbean. And so I, I think we're, we're still there. I think, uh, I think we, we, everybody kind of gets to this point in the season, especially when you had some activity and we kind of go into a lull like this, that, uh, you know, everything's, everything's off and we're this done. isn't going to happen. And, and <laughs> if you're looking at the models, they look, they look dry for the next two weeks. And I, I caution everybody on the models because if, if, you, if you remember during Debbie and you looked at the models, none of them were really hinting at a lot of development. And, and here we are with another system coming in. And so I'd really caution looking at the, the guidance out two weeks. I think there's going to be a lot more potential, especially as the MJO moves over into the Atlantic Basin and, and we get a lot more rising air and, and you know, even even though we're not looking at anything right now, potentially the Gulf or the Caribbean or any of that, I just keep an eye on things um, as, as we move to here to the next few weeks. I think things are going to get a lot more active. Um, and then that's going to continue on into September and, and potentially even in, into October this year. So, yeah, we'll see. So, of course, we're entering the peak season and the peak day of hurricane season is September 10th. So we're still uh, almost a month away from September 10th. And then we got the backside of that. So, uh Plenty of time left for things to get going. Jeff, thank you very much. Good stuff as always. I'd like to remind everybody to subscribe to the Weather Insights podcast on the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Make sure that you click on the notifications button so that you'll get the latest tropical updates and join us for the next Weather Insights briefing.